All right, hello, so you're back. Now I'm gonna talk about something that was really profound to me, and it doesn't matter if I've been teaching in a group or standing in front of hundreds of people and speaking from the stage. When I ask this question, the result is unbelievable. I say, how many people want to be happy? Everybody raises their hand, right? Yes, I wanna be happy. And then I say, how many of you know what happiness is? And a couple people put their hand up. And so this is one of the most profound, profound things that I've found for people to really define how you'd recognize happy for yourself. How would you recognize this um, health for yourself? How are you going to recognize what you want to feel when you're there? For me, um, just going through relationships with men and women and over the years having to let go of relationships that um, weren't healthy but were in my pattern, right? And reform relationships, call in different relationships. There's pieces of, there's a time period where you're in the shift and you start recognizing what you don't want. So I'm gonna give an example of dating here. So I knew how I wanted to feel in a relationship. One of my um, coaches was like, how do you want to coaching friends, she was like, how do you want to feel in your relationship? Define your feelings. That's where we manifest from is that feeling. So I was doing the visualization I'm going to teach in a minute and I'm doing all this stuff to visualize how I want to feel and to cultivate that feeling within me and, and live in it. And then I thought, oh, well, I'm just going to attract this person right away. And I was dating and I started really calling in people that were narcissistic and really belittling and really, really crappy. And if I didn't know better, I would have been devastated. I, I would have stopped. I would have been single forever. I would have gone into a depression. I would have made a whole bunch of meaning about it. Um, I wouldn't have felt good about it at all. But instead, because I'm me and I do this, I got to laugh at the situation because as you're moving from how you used to feel in a coping, stressful, um, adrenal-filled relationship or, or adrenal-filled situation to how you feel, want to feel, you're going to get opportunities to tell the universe, to tell your soul, nope, that's not it. And to really affirm in yourself that you recognize how you want to, what you do want, and you recognize what you don't want. Right. Um, and so I want to eliminate this stopping point when it comes to creating the life that you desire that happens when you um, don't know how to recognize what you do want. You haven't really defined that for yourself and how you want to feel and what that feeling feels like within you. And how to recognize what you don't want, the negative crap too. So when it comes up, you can joyously pass the test, your universal test, and say, no, thank you. I do not want to accept that feeling into my life again. No, thank you. Thank you, but no, thank you. And send the order back. All right. So this um, is a practice that will help you define the main feelings that that we feel. So we're not going to go through the whole list. I'm not going to send you a big pack or anything. You can write this down on a journal and just define for yourself the main stopping points. So the first main stopping point um, is really, they're really similar. So you can define either shame or guilt. I don't know why I'm stopping, but I just wanted to pause there so you can write it down. The second that you want to do is either grief or sadness. Grief or sadness. The third is fear or anger. They're really similar, right? Fear or anger. And if you've ever, like, these three things, like, if you've ever, like, really gone through emotional intelligence training and, and, and got clear on how you feel, you probably, like, first, you're like, I'm really pissed off about that. Or I'm really sad that that happened. Or, like, whatever. Like, you go through a grief or 
right? You go through um, fear or anger, or you're really scared about something, and then that turns into sadness or grief, and then that turns into shame or guilt. It, it just it just happens that way. Sometimes they eliminated those please, three places, but those are the lower rungs that I just want you to define for yourself. And how you define it is, how do I act? What sensation is in my body? And what judgment is in my brain? How do I act? What sensation is in my body? And what judgment comes up in my brain? How do you talk to yourself? This is going to help you just recognize, oh, this is the feeling that's coming up. Okay, so let's go to the higher realms. So fear, anger. So next, what is contentment? What does contentment look like for you? This is also kind of neutral. Like what is neutral? Yeah, that's where you're that way, I'm just neutral. And neutral is a really great place to be. It's just neutral. Right? Um, this is the place to manifest from. When you get to that place of neutrality, then you can really manifest. And we'll get into that deeper in the Amazing You program or private coaching. But um, serious stuff happens this way. Okay, the next one is what is happy. What is happy or... Um, Joyful is another way, but joy and happiness are a little bit different. Joy comes more from a spiritual perspective, and happy is an actual action. But playfulness is a nice action that comes with, with happy, too. She can look at that. So neutrality, happy. Oh, I just had a thought. Excitement is really close to happy, too. So excitement might be a good one to define for yourself. I know excitement for many people because there's um, it's a really similar vibration to terror. Um, after trauma, if the trauma has been forced upon you, um, after that, there's a terror and excitement, and they really kind of feel similar at first. You might have heard that before. It's like going on a roller coaster, right? Do you like it or you don't like it? Oh, wow. um, that, that can be a really good one to decipher, to determine. So happy and excitement work together. And once you get comfortable with that, then you can keep going up the scale. And the last one is this peace, this oneness, the serenity of oneness or enlightenment. What does it feel like when you really feel in touch with your intuition, when you're in that place of trust in your own spirit and your own soul? And if you haven't been there yet, you're okay. Um, this is one that is you know, really high up there is one that I work with people one-on-one -on -one to reseed your soul, to bring your natural vibration, your essence back into these lower rungs, your physical body and your mental body and your emotional body. So if when we go through trauma, oftentimes our soul, our life force kind of gets kicked out and we're hanging on by a string. And so bringing it back together will help you feel better, but just defining this is going to be huge for you. Then whenever you're walking through a feeling, instead of creating a meaning, what you do is you can look at it and analyze it from this witnesser perspective. So this witness perspective is going to allow you to um, kind of detach from the mental, trying to make sense in the why of it all, and just Feel it, which will allow the emotion to pass through you quicker, um, whether it's tears or joy or whatever it is, will allow it to pass through you so, so you can feel that relief, you can feel that blessing, you can feel whatever it is that, that you're seeking. So next we're going to talk about anxiety specifically, and I'm going to take a moment to talk about how anxiety and worry kind of run our lives um, after trauma and how you can break free from this utilizing a technique that um, I absolutely love called the witness.